Hi guys, welcome to the first video on new time series technique, which is arc and arc. So in the previous sections, we have understood that okay, uh, what is a time series? We have understood different different techniques, starting from auto regressors to moving average, then ARIMA, then multiple linear regressions and Gaussian processes as well. So in this particular section, we will analyze a new technique called ARC and GARC. So this is basically a new technique which is being introduced to capture the uncertainty in the data, to capture the disbursement of the data, to capture that, okay, if our data is following the right approach or not, if our model is fitting the data correctly or not. Okay. So moving on to the agenda for the today, we'll start with the introduction of time series that always cover because introduction is basically laying the foundation that, okay, this is the time series. These are the basic pointers that we should keep in mind. Followed with the arc introduction, the introduction to volatility and higher lagger uh, arc model and GARC models. So this will be a pretty similar thing that we have already done in ARIMAs we have already done in you know the other techniques like you know that arma models and 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 in many many other models right so this is basically an extension to that so let's get started with the with the agenda for the first pointer which is introduction to time series okay so we are going to discover that how is it different from other types of data that we usually deal with Okay, we're going to see that, okay, what is time series and how is it processed? Okay, we always cover this because this lays the foundation. This always, always lays the foundation. So a time series is a sequence of information which attaches a time period to each value. So uh, it's nothing. It's just a sequence of information. Uh, let's say the, some kind of weather data, some kind of stock analysis, some kind of, you know, any, any kind of data. But the only thing which is uh, unique about this particular feature is the time series is a sequence of information. It is always, always a sequence of information which attaches a time period to each value. Okay, so we have a time period, we have that, you know, uh, weather data associated with each day. Okay, so for each day, we have the weather data for each instant of time, we have the stock pricing data and stuff like that. Okay, the value can be pretty much anything measurable. So if it is used basically for anything measurable, anything quantized, so it depends on that, you know, it depends on time in, in some way. That's the only thing that we need to keep in mind that it has to be dependent on time. It has to be attached to some time period and the value can be prices, humidity, number of people or, or anything. Okay. There's also, as long as the values recorded are unambiguous, any medium could be measured with time series. So we need to see that, okay, the values are unambiguous. We just need to see and and see a pattern that okay, if that particular value is been attached to a time period or not. There aren't any limitation regarding the total time span of the time series. It could be a minute, a day, a month, or even a frequency, uh, even a century. So this is basically the concept of frequency that we usually deal with. That okay, this is the frequency of the data that we are catering with, and as you can see over the right, there's an image which have a time C time period over the X axis and the value over the Y axis. And the value has been shuffling and oscillating to and fro to and fro uh, like this. And finally it is attaching itself to every, every time period. Okay. All we need is a starting point and an ending point. Okay. So all we need in this particular thing is when from where is it it's starting and till when it is not the case that it, it has to be a minute, it has to be a day or anything. It can be anything, but given the data is sequential and chronological. So this is the another thing that that is a feature of time series, which says that the data should be chronological. Okay. So the data should start from uh, some time period and then it should end till some time period and uh, the data should be sequential in nature. It shouldn't be like send 1960 comes first and then 1950 and, and stuff like that. Okay. 
Each row indicate a specific time period record. Train test split happens chronologically. So as you can see over the diagram over the right, the data before 1959 is used as the training part and after it is used for the testing part. But this is how we split the data. We don't shuffle it and then we split it. We just split it chronologically always. Okay. The data is analyzed univariately or multivariately for the for the given use case. So it's like for any other use case, we can use the data either univariately, which means just one column at a time, or we can combine two or more column like we did in the Gaussian process and in the multiple linear regression. The nature of the data represents if it can be predicted or not so that's that's the major pointer that we are dealing with in every other slides that we have in every other series that we have we first analyze okay what is the nature of the data what kind of data are we dealing with okay and then it basically tells us that okay if that particular data that we are dealing with can it be predicted or not okay so there are some of the basic operations that we apply in the time series it's like reading the data using panda so we always read the data with panda which is a great library for data frames uh, and describe and head are some of the methods which is used to see that okay what what kind of data do we have so describe basically gives us this uh, the statistical the the descriptive statisticals data like mean standard deviation what's the highest maximum minimum and stuff like that and head just shows the top five values or in whatever value you provide in the function okay the next is the check check for null value so we, we should always check for null values because uh, the data is chronological the data is supposed to be sequential in every algorithm that you learn i also learned that okay the data is sequential or not okay so we have to deal with the null values immediately okay line line plot to for each feature so we, we do put plot a line plot just to see that okay how the how the uh, time series is looking like because based on the other pointer that we have seen that the nature of data represent if it can be predicted or not so that is why we do this line plot just to see that okay if the data can be predicted or not okay convert date from string to date time feature so that that is another uh, pre preposition technique that we use setting the desired frequency frequency is like either a minute a day or uh, a second or anything so the time period through which the data is being recorded is basically the frequency and then handling the missing value so obviously if we have a missing value we need to handle it and then ending it by qq plots which basically checks the normality of the data and again it is backing up this particular part that what nature of the data is there so this is all for this particular video in the next video we'll actually do these techniques in a in a live data set and then we will start with the arc operation which is the agenda for this particular series hope you have understood the basics and laid the foundation for time series i wish you all the best for the future videos thank you and have a nice day